Welcome back to Physics of Music. So we're about to enter a new segment of the course where we'll apply all of this basic physics that we learned about, the Newton's laws of motion, and we're going to use those to understand the physics of oscillations and the physics of waves. And the reason we want to do that is because these are the physical phenomena that are responsible for the creation and the transmission of sound and music. So to get started, I want to talk about the situation where things are not moving or oscillating. So I want to talk about a situation called mechanical equilibrium. So if you look around, most things here on Earth are stationary. And according to Newton's laws, because the velocity is remaining zero, so the rate of velocity, change of velocity is zero, what we can conclude is that well, the net force on these stationary objects must be zero. But that doesn't mean that there are no forces on these objects. Of course, we have various forces, including the force of gravity. And so what must be true about those objects is that the forces are adding up to zero. So the situation where the forces on an object add up to zero and where the velocity is equal to zero, that's what we mean by the situation of mechanical equilibrium. So if we think about the bananas on the table in this picture, which I drew because I felt like I could probably draw bananas, there's no special significance to the bananas, then the bananas have a variety of forces acting on them. Okay, there's some forces from the air that we'll ignore, but the main forces I wanna talk about are the force of gravity. That force is pulling the bananas downward but the bananas are not accelerating downward and it's because they're on a table. And so what we could conclude from Newton's second law is that the table must be exerting an upward force on the bananas. It's a force that often is called the normal force. It's basically because the bananas are compressing the table just a little bit and the table doesn't want to be compressed. And so it reacts by uh, providing an upward force on the bananas, and that's just enough to hold the bananas in place. Another example would be a mass on a spring. Okay, this is this is a very common example in physics, not because we're particularly interested in masses and springs, because it's a very simple system that allows us to demonstrate uh, important concepts that in particular are going to be useful in understanding oscillations. Okay, so I've actually got a mass on a spring here in our, uh, this is our demo cam. And so it's, well, it's moving around just a little bit, but more or less it's stationary and its velocity is remaining zero or very small. And so we could say that the forces on this thing are adding up to zero. Uh, what are the forces on this thing? Well, again, you have the force of gravity acting downward and then you could see that there's a spring here, which is being stretched somewhat by the mass. And that in the end is because it's being uh, stretched, it pulls back. It would rather be compressed a little bit more. And so it's pulling back with an upward force. So I want you to think about the situation that you just looked at and that's drawn in the picture here. And in order to start understanding the physics of oscillations, I want to understand what happens when we take a system in mechanical equilibrium and then we displace it a little bit away from that position. So in this case, what happens to the various forces if we pull the object down just a little bit? So take a minute to answer that and then we will talk about it. All right. so. Hopefully you've chosen one of these answers. Let's talk about the two forces in turn. So first of all, the force of gravity. Now remember, we talked about how the force of gravity near the surface of the Earth, you get by multiplying the mass by this gravitational constant, 9.8 times 10, uh, sorry, just 9.8 uh, meters per second squared. And that's the downward force, that's the magnitude of the downward force. And so more or less, it's the same everywhere. It doesn't matter if the object moves up or down. 
at least uh, to a very, very good approximation, the force of gravity is remaining the same, you know, unless we go pretty far into space. What about the force from the spring? Well, if I move that object downward a little bit, then the, string, it, the spring is stretched a little bit more than it was. And with a spring, the more you stretch it out, oh, here's my spring. So the, the more I stretch it out, uh, the more force it pulls back with. So we're gonna talk about that in quantitative detail a little bit later, but just intuitively, you can understand that that is true. If I don't stretch it at all, it doesn't pull back with any force. So in this case, if I move the weight down a little bit, then I get an increased force from the spring. And so we would expect that the force of the spring increases and the force of gravity remains approximately the same. And the important thing for us here is that that means that overall, when there wasn't a net force before, there's now a net upward force um, when you take into account the spring and you take into account gravity. They don't cancel anymore. So we moved it downward, there's an upward force. What if we move it upward? Well, it's the same deal that the force of gravity is not really going to change as I move the thing upward, but the force from the spring over here, if I go back to my demo cam, if I move this upward, then that spring is not stretched quite as much as it was before. And so it's going to be pulling up on the mass with a little bit less force than it was pulling up with previously. So that means that the force of gravity now is going to be a little bit larger and there's going to be a net downward force. So, the force of, so that's because the force of the spring is decreasing in strength and the force of gravity remains approximately the same. Okay, so that leads to a really important idea that applies not just to masses on springs, but very often to almost any system that's in a, a mechanical equilibrium, or more specifically what we'd call a stable mechanical equilibrium, meaning that if you, if you press something a little bit, it's not going to go flying off. And so the phenomena that we have is that if we displace it in one direction, then there tends to be a net force in the other direction that tries to bring it back to the original equilibrium position. If we move the weight up, the net force is downward. If we move the weight down, then the net force is upward. Okay. And these kinds of forces with this property are known as restoring forces. And so you could probably already see that when you have restoring forces, then these things <clears throat> will tend to lead to a certain oscillating behavior. So let's have a look with our demo here. We have our object and I'm just going to pull it down a little bit. And so what we said before was that now there's an upward force on this, a net upward force. If I were to let go, the spring force is a little bit larger than the gravity force. And so what happens is that it moves upward. Okay and it moves upward until it reaches the equilibrium position, but then it still has some velocity, it still has some, some uh, upward velocity here, so it keeps going, um, and then what happens once it gets above the equilibrium position, it, we said that there's a downward force, and so it keeps going, but then that downward force will tend to slow it down, and it gets to the very top when that's when the velocity goes to zero, but there's still that downward force. And so it starts going down and then it kind of repeats, okay? So it goes, goes up and down, up and down. And it's moving a little bit from side to side here as well. So what I want you to do before we talk about this in detail is think about at each stage in this oscillation, uh, I want you to think about what the velocity is doing and how the velocity is changing at each time. So this is a good example of applying your understanding of Newton's laws. And so we want to think about what is the velocity at each phase here? And then using Newton's second law and looking at the forces, <clears throat> 
how is the velocity changing? What is the rate of change of velocity or which direction that is? Okay, so see if for each of these uh, positions of that motion, um, say whether the velocity is zero or upward or downward, and the same thing with the rate of change of the velocity. Is that zero or is it upward or downward? Is V increasing, decreasing, or staying the same? So we're gonna talk about this at the start of the next video. I think I'll end here and then we'll take this up next time.